Hello, everyone, and welcome to our next DDW session called Managing Data at Speed, Powering Business Growth with Innovative Data Practices. That's going to be presented today by Fiona Fox, Head of Data Governance at Vero, and she's joined today by Afshan Latfi, CEO of the Americas for Atacama. All audience members are muted during these sessions, so please submit your questions in the Q&A window on the right side of the screen, and our speaker will respond to as many questions as possible at the end of the talk. Please note that there is a linked form at the bottom of the page titled the EDW Conference Session Survey. This is where you can submit session feedback, and we encourage you to do so. It helps us out a lot. Also, there is a small icon to the lower right of the screen, which will enlarge this window with the speaker and slides. So let's begin our presentation now. Thank you and welcome Fiona and Afshin. Afshin. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. And thank you, Fiona, for, for joining us. So once again, uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're joining us from today. Um, I'm excited to, to be uh, co-hosting and, and uh, presenting at this session for today. It's a fantastic presentation that we have lined up for you. As Eric mentioned, I'm joined remotely today by a very special guest, uh, Fiona Fox, Head of Data Governance and Enablement at Vero Bank. Fiona is a dynamic uh, financial services leader. She has over 20 years of experience and a proven record of successful leadership in delivering fintech, banking, uh, and, and uh, for large corporate and financial institutional customers. Fiona has been recognizing for utilizing innovative approaches to data strategy, data governance, data management, AI, machine learning, and advanced analytics to really drive business growth through optimizations of critical data assets. Um, maybe a quick quick intro on this session, Fiona, and then I'll hand it over to you. Um, today, Fiona will be examining how data management and governance have often been an afterthought for most organizations, which really has led to a more defensive and reactive approach, leaving very little opportunity to focus on innovation and to properly align with the organization's business strategies. So more specific today, we'll have the opportunity to really uh, view a case study outlining how Verbank is managing and optimizing their data today. So with that, I will hand it over to, to Fiona to get us started. Fiona, the floor is yours. Thank you, Afshan. And good morning, good afternoon, um, everyone. Thank you for joining today uh, for this case study overview of what has been to date a very exciting journey uh, for VARO. Um, for those of you who may not have heard of us yet, um, we were founded in 2016 by um, Colin Walsh, um, who calls himself a reformed banker. And he had in his mind for a long time wanted to um, provide some kind of banking um, services that really um, were not just for people um, who were already doing well, but for many Americans who are and remain uh, underserved and underbanked today. And being um, very experienced in um, banking for many years, he had thought maybe he could fix um, a, a bank that was already existing um, to build this um, uh, bank to service everyone in America, um, but he realized that the legacy infrastructure and the data that went with it was just too hard to resolve. So he decided to start his own bank. So um, for the last five years, Vara has been working really hard to create a more enlightened way to provide financial opportunity for everyone. And we've been focusing on tools, products and insights to help our customers become more financially resilient regardless of their background or their current financial situation. And importantly, we can profitably serve underserved communities, which is something that the traditional banking system has really struggled with. Um, so our journey really started um, as a fintech, um, which means that we were operating as an app um, on top of um, a sponsor bank, which had a traditional banking infrastructure. Um, and we went on the journey um, to gain a full banking license in order to really provide the best of fintech together with the best of banking um, in our customer solutions. So why would we stand up a bank with data management and governance? I think everyone here today would probably say, well, why not? <laughs> it, it would seem like the, the ultimate thing to do if you can. Um, we wanted to 
uh, really start at the beginning and be able to manage our data um, at the speed of the business as it grows and to power the business. Um, but it wasn't as easy as it might seem. Um, so we had some challenges along the way. Um, if you think of standing up a whole new ba bank, we had um, about 30 plus systems, including um, a core bank, a new core banking system, a new data lake, um, and everything upstream and downstream, all going into production at once. So that's a lot of data, data flowing for a start. Um, and then the second thing was that our um, data lake is both operational and analytical, uh, which means there's a lot going on in, in the single place. Um, together with that, we, we operate very lean teams, um, although we're growing quickly. Um, and we were really taking on three massive programs at once. One was to build a new bank. Uh, one was to manage and grow our existing uh, fintech infrastructure. And the other was to uh, apply for the bank charter, which is really significant um, effort on its own. So a lot of um, work, uh, a lot of not so many people and really very tight timelines, you know, because we had cost constraints um, as well, being not yet profitable. So we wanted to really use our data to become a truly data-driven company and to be able to scale our data in a way that drives business growth. And as many of us who worked on data governance and management programs before know, um, we're very often in catch-up mode in organisations that have been around for a while. And I really wanted to avoid that as much as possible at VARO. I've been in um, large financial institutions and um, smaller financial institutions over the years and have really seen some um, challenges with um, the way we manage and govern our data and the way we implement that. Um, some of them, which I won't dive into a lot today because we've heard a lot of great discussions about them earlier in the week, really include you know, the lack of business ownership or being disconnected from business goals and processes. Um, we know that data governance is often seen as an overhead, um, you know, in a defensive way. And often the value is not well understood until regulatory pressure or operational failure occurs, um, which, you know, then leans us not to be able to drive um, our business with data. Um, in addition, I think we've all seen um, tools being implemented without processes being around or the wrong tools um, being implemented um, or tools that um, have a long gestation period before any business value is gained. So what I really wanted to do was flip that around and to make the data management really relevant across our product um, and business process life cycles um, to be able to show continuous improvement and incremental business value all along the way and to really keep pace of the, the business and, and the speed of the organisation, which is very agile. So the question of offence versus defence. Um, in my mind, creating a strong offence um, often enables a very efficient defence, and that was what I really wanted to do here um, at VARO. So really wanted to ensure that, um, firstly, we're meeting the organisation and business where we are. Um, and that resulted in, I guess, some less traditional focus areas that became very important to VARO um, as we went on our data management and governance journey. So very key, obviously, was to align with the business strategy. What are we trying to achieve? Um, we heard from John Ladley um, a great presentation yesterday about um, data literacy for leadership. And perhaps surprisingly, um, you might have thought that at a fintech, um, the understanding of data or, or the data literacy and its value um, might be stronger than in many other um, traditional institutions. Um, I surprisingly found that um, some of the same challenges that I've seen before 
um, were here as well uh, from, from a data literacy perspective. Um, so there was a lot of advocacy required to bring people along the journey. Um, and I found that the best way to do that was to jump in um, and make it very pragmatic, practical to the needs of the organisation um, that was moving fast, as I mentioned. Um, and some of the things that came out of that um, as being really important to business users from the start was where is the data? Um, how does the data flow around the organisation? And how can I access and use the data? Um, you can imagine, you know, 500 people um, asking all of those questions at once when you've stood up um, 30 plus um, systems um, in, in production, which is a very unusual um, situation, definitely. Um, so out of that data discovery, um, building data flow diagrams and integration um, and data solutions um, for new products actually became my first three uh, sort of big focus areas to really support the business. The one important note here as well is that I really didn't want to miss um, the opportunity to look at this from an offense perspective um, so that we can really meet the needs of the regulators efficiently going forward um, and, and ensure that VARO is you know, very data driven. So how, how did I do this? Um, I know not everything works the same for all companies and certainly um, the key is to find what's best for, uh, for your company. Uh, what worked for me was to build a really robust but um, maybe lighter than usual policy and standards framework. Um, so I didn't want to end up with 100 policies that required huge admin and heavy overhead going forward. So that was streamlined into one um, core data management policy. Then with the um, standards and operating models and guidelines, um, user, user guides being the much more agile and constantly changing sort of underlying support to that policy framework. Um, so it's light, but um, we haven't missed anything out here. Um, looking at our data privacy, security, retention, all aspects of governance. Um, th this has really enabled us to um, build a good framework uh, on, on which to um, implement our processes and capabilities. Um, integrated data management processes and capabilities has been absolutely key. Um, if I told you that we started well out with a team of two to support the whole organization, um, I, I still quite can't believe it, but that's that's the size um, of our team, which is now growing significantly. But um, you know, we've done everything to date with just two, two people. Um, so in order to do that, um, I've created some very sort of simple but broad processes. Um, we often hear about um, going narrow and deep in data management, picking an area, focusing on it, doing it well, and then moving on to the next. Um, I chose the opposite approach here actually, which is broad and shallow um, to enable us to cover all the core aspects of data management um, without, um, any one area falling into disrepair due to lack of um, resources to pay attention to it. Um, and the reason for doing this was um, my thinking that we could then um, really cover model and data management um, processes end to end, and then go on a maturity journey um, as well to deepen um, that aspect along the flow um, as we mature as an organization as well. So the only way I was able to do this, um, because I've done this before, either with no tools and just in Excel or um, with um, fragmented tools um, that don't talk to each other or with a you know, great tool that takes years to implement, but you don't see any business value um, in, the, in the interim, um, so the way that I've been able to do it here at VARO has been through this integrated capability um, where in Atacama, um, I've been able to 
um, build a business glossary uh, for terms and KPIs, um, do very broad data discovery by connecting easily to um, even Excel spreadsheets that might have been on our desktops and you know ver variety of our systems and databases, um, and particularly the data lake. Um, and then to um, really profile, get to know the data and to build data quality monitoring around that as well. Um, together with that, um, we're also implementing automated data lineage um, because I've also lived through the pain of manual lineage and retroactive trying to work out, you know, the, the way that tracing data works. Um, so it's great to be able to do this for us, you know, right from the start um, in an automated way that will stay up to date as we grow and change as well. Um, the example I've given here is one of our frameworks um, of standardised implementation. And um, I know this is very familiar to everyone, but I've really simplified it for us. Um, starting with the um, business process or the data flows. Um, I actually built data flow diagrams for all business areas around the bank. Um, so then it was very easy for us as we looked at a model um, or, or some kind of critical business process to identify the critical data, um, you know, put it into the glossary with its definitions um, and then profile it get to know it better, build the data quality rules, um, and then really create that feedback loop for issue remediation as we go um, around. And this has become a process that's very easily digestible um, around the bank and has been adopted um, very easily um, upfront into our product um, and model development processes. I mentioned before the shallow, um, shallow and broad approach. Um, and one question I've faced a lot in the past has been, um, how do we know when it's governed? Is it done yet? And um, because of that, I developed this um, maturity framework for critical data element monitoring so that whatever level you want to put for one, two, three, four, five, that this can be used by any organization um, as appropriate. We could say, okay, today we have reached level one, you know, we're, we're doing our basic data quality monitoring, we've identified our sources, and then we can move on from there. Um, and the, the journey for everyone is really clear. So, you know, we're still around um, level, level one, two today. And by the end of the year, we're aiming for level four. Um, across, you know, the, the data management framework um, that, that you've seen previously here. So what the integrated um, capabilities have enabled us to do really is to embed um, our data practices up front in our product and model development. Um, we've got 300 plus terms in our business glossary to date with their definitions. Um, we have centralized KPIs. Um, that was a bit of a journey. Um, <laughs> there were uh, a number of um, disparate sets that we had to bring together. Um, we have profiled all of our critical data around the bank um, and are well into our journey of monitoring that critical data um, at that level one and two that I just mentioned. Um, we have 10 models in progress with monitoring this year. Um, and we're working on the automation of our lineage for all of those. Um, I must say it's very, very busy for two of us doing all of this. So, so my team is expanding right now. But the fact that we've been able to get here, um, I feel very good about um, how this sets us up uh, for the future. Um, we couldn't have done this without the integrated um, capabilities. And, you know, one area that I'm excited about that we're about to get to is actually the integration of um, our data lineage in Manta with Atacama um, so that we can then actually see, um, as you can see in the, the bottom left here, we can then see the quality of um, each um, data 
element um, as, as its lineage is traced as well. So for me, the value of this um, is really fantastic. And um, the automated dashboards that I've been able to generate really instantly have enabled me to communicate throughout the organization in a way that I wouldn't have been able to, you know, just due to, re due to resourcing. Um, so the value has been um, great. And, and I think our growth um, um, will, will continue and we can scale now as well. Um, I want to leave you with really just some thoughts about where we will be in five years. Um, I do see that data management and governance is a differentiator for, for companies. And I think that's why we're all here today, because we all realize this. But I, I think we'll see more and more companies who aren't focusing on data management um, will become less relevant and successful um, as the next five years sort of go. Um, I also think that companies who don't or are not able to adopt agile data management practices um, will struggle as well because the speed and velocity of velocity of our data continues. Um, and I think that um, we really um, can use our data um, through great data management for significant competitive advantage. Um, and I'm very excited to continue on, on this journey. Um, I invite you all to follow our journey as we scale and grow using our data. Um, and please feel free to uh, reach out. Um, I'm happy to share any more information um, on what we've covered today as well. That's great. So Afshin, we have about eight minutes left for questions, if you have gotten any in there. Yes, we do. i uh, love to get back on the stage, uh, the virtual stage. There I am. Thank you. So th thank you, Fiona. Thank you so much for the presentation. Extremely insightful. I'm not surprised that we already have uh, quite a few questions. Uh, as I go through these questions, maybe I want to welcome the others to uh, take this opportunity to have a little bit more interaction uh, with, with, this, with the presenter today. So feel free to use the Q&A section to write your comments, and I'll be more than happy to, to address them and, and, and pose them to Fiona. So Fiona, a couple of questions I wanted to uh, to start, and one of them was actually a question that I wanted to ask myself. Um, you know, it starts off with uh, you know Fiona, very impressive what you've been able to accomplish with just two resources. Now, now you did mention that you were able to grow from two to a larger, much much larger team, um, and I, and I think I'll kind of merge my question with, with with this question as well. So, just trying to understand if you can share more about um, your experiences on being able on how you were able to actually grow that team. So, you know, how were you able to to show value? Was it an easy conversation or was it uh, a, a more, um, I guess you need to show more ROI to, to, to the team? What, what were some of the experiences in growing that team on your side? So I think, um, you know, one of the key concepts, um, Ashton, was that um, everybody has a role to play. So um, in really getting um, people on board as business owners um, and then um, really saying we're all stewards of our data because we all want great outcomes has been the key to kind of um, virtually augmenting the team, um, you know, through the business teams. And that has had a great um, effect of people buying in, you know, to understand how it can, um, you know, improve their the quality um, right. and the output of what they're building. That, that's been one of the big wins um, early on, I think. Very good. And I guess maybe to piggyback on that thought, so one, one thing is to obviously educate the team and talk about the importance of being stewards. Uh, but another thing is to really enable them and give them the right tools to, to be able to, uh, to do so. Uh, so one, one of the questions is, what are the technologies and tools that you were using for your business glossary? But maybe if you can even expand and say, what are some of the tools that you use to help enable the team to be, to be part of this sort of organizational approach? Sure. Um, so really, um, we used um, the, the business glossary in Atacama. Um, the value for me has been that it's all been in one place, um, that we can enter everything in the business glossary. And then um, when the business users say, um, I want to know more about this data um, that I have here, um, we can 
pull it into Atacama, show them, and immediately they um, the lights go on and and they can see it very clearly and they're super happy. And someone even was able to identify some fraud just from eyeballing the data in, in Atacama, which was very unexpected, um, but a great uh, outcome. So I think um, I think having um, something that's ready to go that we could just you know pull a spreadsheet in from the desktop or point to any data around the organisation has been really valuable um, for us. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank, thank you, Fiona. A um, couple more questions, and um, and again, I'll try to kind of put them together as, as they're within the same context. But there's there's a there's a couple of questions about the lineage and the automated lineage, uh, and 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 how that works. Maybe if you could give a little more insight on some of the advantages of having a lineage functionality that allows you to connect automatically with sources and be able to pull things automatically, but then also allowing you to 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 sort of manage yourself within your glossary and, and take advantage of that information. So if you could speak about mm -hmm. the relationship between the glossary, the lineage, and what it actually brings to your organization. Absolutely. So I think on the lineage side, that's, uh, in my career, that has always been, you know, the kind of uh, area that is just seems the most difficult to tackle, um, especially when you've got lots of legacy systems um, and data flows. So. Here um, we are able to um, put code annotations, you know, with Manta and and also with use their scanners to follow our data as it goes upstream into the data lake, into the different zones of the data lake as it's curated and used, um, and it then creates this map which is um, um, which can run whenever you like. So you might do it once a week. Um, so it's always going to be up to date, which is huge value. Um, I'm sure many of you have done um, those data lineage pro projects that go on forever and are hugely resource intensive. That's <laughs> right. So that's been um, really, really, really um, amazing. And then connecting the um, fields, um, the technical metadata fields to um, the business term in the glossary then enables the business user to look at that path of data as it's flowing in the context of the business which is hugely helpful for them and makes them much more invested as well in whether their um, operational processes or their analytical processes are working um, they're able to see when they're not um, so it really um, does help a lot Thank you, Fiona. Maybe a follow-up question on that. So, you know, you talked about the the value of the automated automated uh, data linear so that you don't have to spend months and months to manually gather information. Are there any other um, use cases you can share where you feel that AI and machine learning um, functionally has really helped your team to maybe focus more on the innovation and the, and, you know, you talked about being proactive, you know, in your approach. Mm -hmm to really give you the time and space to focus on innovation and being proactive instead of just spending you know, this very large amount of time on either gathering lineage information or, or manually gathering uh, glossary uh, metadata. Oh, absolutely. We've got a really good use case at the moment where we um, are um, pointing at a karma as a, to a data source, which is our AI ML schema um, in our sort of AWS ecosystem. So we're now going to layer on the AIML benefits from Atacama onto our AIML schema um, as well, so that we can really um, leverage and, you know, understand the data and, um, um, you know, really, I think the benefits for that, um, I can't even describe properly because um, it, it will really um, enable us to do so much more, get so many more insights into our data quickly. Um, and, you know, Atacama itself is getting to know our data really well, you know, through the AI um, capabilities. Thank you. Thank you, Fiona. Uh, there's a couple of questions, and, and I guess your, your, your um, 
stay me around, have starting with a team of two and then being able to grow. It seems like it resonated really well with, with a lot of uh, the folks attending the session. And there's a, quite a few uh, questions about how you've structured your organization to be able to, to, to manage. So I'll just go through a couple of these. And uh, one of them says, uh, what was the size and complexity? Uh, apologies for breaking in. We yeah. actually have time for about one more question is all. We're just about at time here. Okay, so I will just wrap it up. If you just very quickly in a few seconds, Fiona can give us a, an idea of what does your operational organization looks like in terms of what, who are you supporting uh, from your stewardship perspective? Um, we're supporting all the, all the business teams, so retail, banking, lending, um, risk, you know, fraud, BSA, AML, um, the marketing team, brand, uh, finance. <laughs> um, we're covering the whole business. Um, so I think um, I, I see a lot of other great questions here and I know we're out of time. So um, yes. I'd love to follow up on all these questions um, with with people who've asked them and provide um, some more information that might be. Absolutely. Helpful. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Fiona. So for, for the for the other question, feel free to reach out to the Fiona Atacama. More than happy to address them um, after the session. Thank you. Yes, and thank you, Fiona and Afshin, for this great presentation. Uh, lots of audience engagement, clearly a lot of interest. As soon as this video is published, uh, the Q&A will remain live, and you will be able to interact and answer questions there as well. Wonderful. Um, great. So thank you both so much. Thanks to our attendees for tuning in. Please, attendees, complete your conference session survey on the page for this session. Uh, and the keynote session with Doug Laney and John Ladley will start in about 15 minutes. So we'll see you there. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Eric. You Thank you, Fiona. Have a great day. Thank you all. Thank you.